most of you have experience with the idea of a confidence interval, although you might not have known that's what it was. In any election year, you, you see a lot of statements like the one here. Somebody does a survey, they, they collect a sample, and then they do two things. They calculate the proportion of the sample that, in this case, proves of the president's job performance, and they calculate the margin of error. That's this plus or minus part here, right? This range from 49.1 minus 1.5 percent up to 49.1 plus 1.5 percent is what's called a confidence interval. It's a numeric range that we're reasonably confident contains the actual proportion for the entire population. Right? So that highlights the goal of creating a confidence interval. We want to know what the value of a parameter, like a proportion or a mean, is for the entire population. But all we have to work with is the corresponding statistic calculated from a sample. Confidence intervals are a tool that we can use to make a statement about the population parameter based on what we know from our sample. All right, so before we go any further, I, I want to take a quick step back and make sure everyone remembers the notation that we use to distinguish between values from a sample and values from a population, since it's a distinction that's going to be really important when we start doing confidence interval calculations. Now, we've already seen the symbols for the mean and standard deviation, the Greek letters for the population, X bar and S for the sample. Right. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about proportions. When we're talking about a proportion. We use a regular P for the population proportion. And this symbol that, that's read P hat for the sample proportion. Now, I want to make sure it's clear what, what I mean by a proportion. A proportion refers to the proportion of a population that has a certain attribute. For example, the proportion that plans to vote in a certain way or who have test scores over a certain threshold. You can think of it as being the decimal equivalent of a, of a percentage. All right, so we have a little terminology here, right? Uh, a point estimate is a single value used to approximate a population parameter. For example, you're gonna see in the next lecture, the sample mean is a point estimate for the population mean. Right? A confidence interval is what I talked about two slides back. It's a range of values used to estimate the true value of a population parameter. And the confidence level is the probability that the confidence interval actually contains the population parameter, assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. Okay, so we, we have... Um, but one more definition here is it's this idea of a critical value, right? And I know there's, there's a lot going on here, and this alpha over 2 business tends to, tends to mess with people sometimes. So let, let's drill down into this a little bit. You'll see what, when we start talking about confidence intervals, the first thing you do is you, you pick a confidence level. And you, you get to pick this, right? 95% uh, is a very common value. Uh, uh, a lot of times you, you won't see a confidence interval specify like the, the things you see on the news uh, never explicitly state this. If it isn't explicitly stated, it's safe to assume they're using 95%. Uh, that, that's very common default value. Uh, you could conceivably go down to 90, although at that point you're, you're really kind of starting to lose reliability. Uh, and you will sometimes see it go up as high as 99. Uh, medical research, for example, where you really want to have a high level of confidence, you'll often see use something as high as the 99% confidence interval. So here, here's what we're talking about. We're, we're kind of defining what, what the range of acceptable values is. right? When we say, and I'm going to use 95% as an example here. We talk about a 95%, <coughs> excuse me, 95% confidence level. What I mean is I want 95% of the sample values to be in this middle range, All right? So what I need to know is I need to know what are these cutoff points? What are these numbers here that define my 95% of, of good samples from everything else? These cutoff points here 
are the critical values. All right, now you're, you're going to see this alpha over two, Z alpha over two talked about a lot. Okay, alpha is one minus the confidence level. Whoops, I know how to spell level. There we go, L-E-V-E-L. -E -E so if my confidence level is 0 0.99, then alpha is 0 0.05. That is how much is in these outside pieces, right? So this piece together with this piece has to have 0 0.05, and that is alpha. Okay, now remember this this normal distribution is symmetric. So this alpha is going to be evenly distributed between these two sides. So if the whole thing is alpha, then each of these is alpha over two. And that's where this notation for the critical value comes from, right? We call the critical value Z alpha over two because it's the Z score that has, referring to this left-hand one, it's the Z score that has alpha over two of the area to the left of it. We're thinking on the right-hand side over here, it's the critical value that has alpha over two of the area to the right. Did I say right or left? It should, it, it, it's, this lower one has alpha over two to the left. The upper one has alpha over two of the area to the the right. So look, looking at my example here, right, what would Z alpha over 2 be? Well, if alpha is 0 0.05, then alpha over 2 is half of that, or 0 0.025. And now I'm just going to the, to the standard normal distribution table, right? And, I, and I'm looking up, remember how we do this, I'm given an area and I want to find the z-score. So you're going to look up 0 0.025 in the body of the table and then get your answer from the upper row and the left-hand column. And you should see the z-score that corresponds to an area of 0 0.025 to the left is negative 1.96. So the upper one, again, be because of the symmetry, this will be positive 1.96. Those would be the critical values or the Z alpha over two values for a 95% confidence level. Okay, so I said 90, 95, and 99 are, are kind of our, our standards. These are the ones that you're gonna see the most often. So I went ahead and, and you can confirm this looking at the table. I went ahead and calculated the critical values for each one. These are worth just writing down, having off to the side somewhere because we're gonna be using them quite a bit. Or if you go to your textbook or whatever standard normal distribution table you're working from, if you look down at the bottom, a lot of the tables actually have these critical values down there on the bottom, again, because they come up so often. Okay, so now, now we've got some terminology. We have this critical, we know what a critical value is, and this Z alpha over two thing. Now we're ready to actually start calculating confidence intervals given some sample data.